What's up YouTube? This is Roxbox90 here with a deck tech. This is for my Sundial the Infinite deck, which I've been working on for, I don't know, a couple of weeks now. Uh, it's, a, it's slightly tentative. I'll tell you what I'm considering and what I've seen play and what I've seen have in play. Uh, the main idea of the deck is you start out a little slowish. You try to get, um, you get a couple of, uh, you start putting out land, you get a couple of ramp creatures going, hopefully, maybe one or two. Uh, by turn two or three, you should already be focused on getting out uh, some of your preliminary power stuff. And then you start <clears throat> taking full control of the board by getting rid of all their stuff and ending in one of the couple of winning strategies for this deck. So, land base first, I guess quickly. Um, I did two Seaside Citadel because I don't want them... I don't want the chance to gain them so much late game, but if I get them early game, that's good because they're really good cards, but late game, they're not as useful, so... Two of them. Three Forbidden Orchards. I'll tell you how they work with um, one, of the, one of the main focuses of the deck. But suffice to say, they get you any color land you want and give a 1-1 one, one flying to your opponent, which is totally fine in this case, as you'll see why. Um, four Sun Petal Groves. Seven Plains. I'm still working out how I'm going to do the basic lands, but for now, seven planes um, because they activate both the groves and four glacial fortress. This is in a trade, so I'm getting it soon. Uh, and a reflecting pool because if I have glacial fortress, some petal grove, or either of these out, it basically acts as an, an, an any of the three colors I need. So kind of like command tower for this deck. Um, and I had one lying around, so I thought, why not? And then the ramp creatures, I have three birds of paradise. I might put a fourth in instead of the seventh planes, but for now I have three birds. Um, so that's the main base. I think it's 21 land and the three birds, that's 24 cards towards ramp. The ramp aspect, I've been getting usually enough land I need. I'm still play testing it, obviously. So um, then in terms of the somewhat control aspects, I have three turn aside because do you want your sundials? and your Mimic Vats to stay alive. Uh, and usually people do spot removal stuff, so this is what you're gonna focus on, uh, getting, rid of their, getting rid of their targeted spot removal. And then if they start doing Day of, if they start later, later game doing Day of Judgment, Wrath of God, etc., you negate, you have three negates in here to help deal with that. Uh, tutoring, because you need to really get the Sundial by turn three or four at latest. I put in one Lightning Tutor, one Congregation at Dawn and two Fabricates. What I'd rather is two Enlightened Tutor and either two of these, two Congregation at Dawn or a Congregation at Dawn and a Eladomri's Call um, for tutoring. But for now, that's all I, I, I these, this is more expensive. This I haven't seen anywhere, but the one I have, uh, and I don't want to really buy it right now. And Fabricates are kind of covering for the Enlightened Tutor. Um, so I'm still playtesting, but I'm just letting you know what I would like in here in the future. Uh, and those tutor for the stuff you need. Then you have the spot, the uh, uh, blinkers, I call them. Uh, they basically, when they hit play, they remove, when they hit play or when they attack, they basically remove a permanent or a creature from the game and it comes back into play at the end of turn. But with the sundial, you basically make it a removal. You play a creature and remove something. So the turn to mists are just to remove a creature from the game and it comes back at the end of turn. So you do it. You can, you can do it to a guy with uh, token, with counters on him, and that will get rid of the counters when he comes back into play, but uh, you prefer to use it to use as, as actual removal. And one and a blue-white, um, a hybrid, gives you easy leverage with mana color, which is good. Uh, four Flicker Wisp, this is kind of why I had the planes, is that the, the Glimmer Point Stag and the Flicker Wisp both cost two white, and the Flicker Wisp, they... Uh, are a 3-1 flying that removes any permanent from the game when they hit play and it comes back at end of turn. Well, it doesn't come back at end of turn, that's the idea. Uh, but they're flying, so they're good against, uh, and they're 3-1, so they're good against even stronger flying creatures are deterred, uh, even things like Nighthawks and so on. Uh, and then the Glimmer Point Stag, they're 3-3 three, three Vigilance, sorry about the glare, uh, with the same ability. So they're more of a land-bound creature, but they do the same thing, and um, the Vigilance kind of helps later game. And then I had an Otherworld Journey, which is basically Turn to Mist, but um, Turn to Mist is better. I just only had two, so until I get another one, I'm using Otherworldly Journey, but I'd want a third one. Then I used two Gale Powder Mages. These guys 
Whenever they attack, they remove a creature from the game and do what these guys do. And they're 4 for 3 3 flying, they're a cheap rare, and they're pretty good to use. So I use them for consistent removal once I have my mana base up. Uh, but these only do it when they hit play. And then the crux of the deck is the four sundials, which obviously you kind of need to have at least one out at all times if you can. Four mimic vats, three Nakata war prides. I might put a fourth in, but three have been suf sufficient. And usually when I get one, it's totally fine. And two Eldrazi monument, which are hopefully being traded slash, uh, yeah, traded from. I don't want to buy them. Traded from for them. But the idea is pretty much the mimic vat can steal any of their creatures that are really strong, and you can make token. Uh, you can make a token of it that has haste when it, hits, when it comes into play, and it would remove it at end of turn, but it doesn't remove it at end of turn. So you can take a really nice creature that now costs three as long as you have it in play. Or if someone kills your War Pride, you can imprint the War Pride on it, and now he costs three colorless instead of three green and three. Uh, the main idea being is that the Nakota War Pride, when they attack, they make a double of them, a, uh, a copy of themselves for each of, their, of your opponent's creatures, which, is, which are removed at end of turn, even though they're put into play attacking with the original War Pride. The idea being, they stay next turn. Even better is that they all have the same abilities because they're direct copies. So the person usually gets quickly overwhelmed with the War Prides, but even if they don't, if you play a mon if you have a monument out, it's so easy to just sacrifice one of the copies and make them all absurdly crazy. Uh, and that's kind of how it works. That's the way the deck works. It's not particularly complicated. If you have any questions about it, let me know, and rate, comment, like, subscribe, and let me know what you guys think. Thanks.